Folks, welcome back. My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments. Today we go all the way to the journey. Ooh, that was very, that was satisfying. Let's do that again. Hold on, ready? Let's do that again. Ooh, that was satisfying. Well, folks, we journey all the way back today to the XY era of Rudy's bathroom of Fates Collide. Copyright date, hold on. Copyright date 2016 Pokemon. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Seven years by Rudy's finger counting. Boy, do we got a lot to talk about because I, we need to talk about some important lessons, market fundamentals, market movements in 2023. My patron, Logan, says, Rudy, dude, I missed the XY era. Throw me in. I said, Logan, your wish is my command. I don't know if it's a smart idea, but I'll throw you in. Friendly reminder on here. These things are rare and they're expensive. So just to remember the pack orders, it was three, four, five commons, and then it goes right to the rare. Okay. So five commons, and you got your foil, or I'm sorry, your hollow, your non hollow rare, and then you got your three uncommons. Okay. It's been a long time, folks. So essentially put, is that even a word? Essentially put? Oh my God. No wonder people think I'm such a goofball. Um, this product is just becoming really, really unbelievably rare. And I can't believe I'm saying that over an XY era product because of what we've been through. It's absolutely unbelievable that we're considering, okay, upside down pack. That's, uh, another, oh, okay, so is it all, up, the rest is all upside down. Okay, that's suspicious. All right, so we got, <laughs> love the name, and our first fancy schmancy. Alakazam EX. Boy, that does look beautiful, doesn't it? Beautiful texturing on that card. The first big boy hit right there. Um, these are all packs that I broke down myself and my family when I had a, which, the second or the third card store location. Back in 2016, this was when we did the second or third, I don't remember which location this was. Um, and this was one that we were doing a lot of uh, product breakdowns to get more supply because... Um, you can get them a little bit cheaper if you're willing to put in the labor and everything. So, I've had these a long time. I know they're not searched. Although, again, I know every time I do these videos, people always think, well, Rudy, hold on. The rumor is when you break them down from different tins and gift boxes and things, you know, the pull rate is always better. And there is no evidence to support that, but people have always believed that. So, let's see how we do in this video. This is 36 random packs. And our second, a big old fancy pool here, is our, what is that, Genesect EX for our second flashy, flashy hit. And our three uncommons. I don't think any regular uncommons or commons are, are any major value in this product. I know most of the value is going to be in these flashy hits, and a lot of people grade them. And that is a different thing in the Pokemon world and culture. Remember that. In the magic world, nobody really grades anything new. Eh, nothing good in that pack. I love that excavation kit. I always, you know me, I always love artifact related things. Um, everybody in the Pokemon world grades new cards. And, you know, PSA dominates, and uh, Becca does Pokemon grading. Uh, a lot of people do the PG, um, uh, Premier Card Grading, PCG. And um, a lot of people grade Pokemon cards, the brand new ones across the board. It's, it's just a popular thing, you know, for whatever the reason is. It is just a uh, no major hit in that pack. It's always been very popular to grade new Pokemon cards, and, well, they sell for good premiums, and people collect PSA 10s and Beckett 10s and, you know, PCG 10s and whatever you're grading. People love the 10s, and it is a solid market for this stuff, man. It's always been that way. I'm not sure why Magic always re rejects new card grading, but they do. It's just always been that way. I've always been a lot, I've always had a lot of people and patrons ask me about that. You know, there's always a lot of conversations about why is it that people love to grade new cards when the supply is so much higher. Ah, nothing great in that pack either, is there? And it's just a double. There's a little, 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 little double colorless energy. Anyway, I think the biggest surprising to me isn't really the single cards per se, but how how little the sealed product is of this Pokemon product, and it's not even ten years old. And you like seriously go on TCG Player, ladies and gentlemen, and look at it. Sir, look at it. It's absolutely insane. 
It's absolutely mind-boggling. Because for those of you who weren't around seven, eight years ago, this product was not rare at all. This was a very easy product to find. Stores were stuck with them. You know, I was stuck with all this. You know, I guess that's considered a regular hollow hit compared to the other ones. And oh wait, no, I'm sorry. That is a, a second hollow hit there. You just couldn't really see it very well. Not really a crazy, really sought after EX blowing up crazy thing, but it is, I guess, considered a hit. See, I don't know. I don't know if Pokemon deems all hollows a hit, or is it only the flashy? Fl I don't know how they they calculate that or what they determine. And again, this is older, pre-flashy, uh, pre-flashy, pre-increased pool rates. So the pool rates on these older packs were nowhere near the same as like the new Scarlet and Violet pool rates of the uh, new Chase cards. So they definitely did change that over the years. Now a lot of people were upset about that. They liked the idea of Chase cards being well, Chase and whoa, uh, we have a Crypt card. So we have our first misprint Pokemon card on camera, ladies and gentlemen. Logan, you have yourself a Crypt. Hollow card um, from the XY era. That is, um, it's just the two rares. Okay, so the un both of the rares in this pack have been, well, very, uh, very crimped. Very, very crimped. Wow, that's been a long time. That's a cool one. I, see, is that a good thing or a bad thing? In the Pokemon, is there a premium for crimped and misprint cards that are old and things? I don't even know if that's a thing or not in the Pokemon world. That's pretty cool to see. I have not seen that before. That's kind of a nice chase. And here we go for the Mega Ultra Mega King Dingling Alakazam EX, our third crazy mega hit. And see, that's why I said the pool rates, if you don't, again, if you're buying from a store or an individual who didn't search the packs and is hosing you, because they want to steal money and do terrible things. If you're buying from a good sourced um, individual who's actually selling you authentic packs, um, he really definitely that must not be Rudy because all his this is shady. Second pack with upside down cards, technically a hollow there. Um, technically, you should be getting normal pull rates even out of these blister type packs and you know all these EX GX packs from a long time ago. You should not be having reduced or increased print run. If it's a legitimate source. And another, is that the same one? That is not. Oh, wait a minute. That is not the same one. So what is the difference? So it's the same card. One's just a more rare, flashier version. Yes, it is. Wow. It's okay. So on this particular one, this is the full Monty textured full art version, I guess. Because you can even see the thing. Wow, that is really beautiful. So we've got two. I'm sorry, yeah, we have two of the super flashy ones and two of the regular ones. So we're about halfway through this video. Um, again, pool rates seem to be right where they should be. We're not seeing any uh, increased or reduced or whatever pool rates. Eh, normal pack there. So, anyways, it's just... This is an important lesson, everybody. So we're going to go into the second part of my conversation I want to talk about today. Uh, Logan, it seems like you're doing pretty good. I'm not really sure... Are you planning, if you're planning grading these or doing anything, but I know if you grade some of these cards, especially these ma these really big hits, um, high graded versions of those do have pretty big premiums, or at least they used to before the uh, bear market of 2022 took hold of a lot of things. All right, and okay, a lot of, wow, really? Upside down packs and cards again, huh? So I just, okay, so we're in Scarlet Violet now, okay? We're back to the same thing. Oh, the new Scarlet Violet era. Everything's weak. The good days of Pokemon are over. Everything's overprinted. We're back to the same conversation that starts at the beginning of every new block. I went through it with Sun and Moon. I went through with Sword and Shield. I went through it with the XY era. And I'm here to tell you all, um, like I said, we've had a dip from a little reprint from the actual uh, Lost Origin Silver Tempest and... Uh, Scarlet Violet Base, and um, if you want my advice, I'm a creepy guy on the computer who has no financial credentials and lives in his parents' basement and uh, has no idea what he's talking about. My advice is if you missed out on these products and you really enjoy them, this is probably your last chance to actually buy into um, some of these products because we had a little dip from the reprint, but past that, I mean, that's it. That's all that's coming to market. So if you missed out and the prices jumped so high on you, well, at least now you have a chance to get in about 20% off the all-time highs. 
And that's a great buy-in point for products that are essentially going to be out of print, especially Lost Origins and Silver Tempest. So, all right, so we're getting towards the end here. I want to see if we get anything else. So it looks like the pool rates are completely average of where they should be. And um, it looks like we're not doing above or below average. Another crazy full R. Okay, that's the good one. The more expensive one. Flashy, flashy. Okay, that is the second version. So I'm assuming you have the flashy, like, Mega Ultra Alex Zami X. But then you have this, like, full art textured version. So I'm assuming these full art textured versions are really the, the main chase ones that people like to either grade to uh, collect or, you know, get kind of build their collections with. That seems like kind of the big boy, the big bad boy that people really want to get. Because like I said, the regular, like the reverses and the regular hollows are nice and all, but they don't have that wow factor that Pokemon's completely ridiculous looking texture blah 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 cards have. Anyways, but I, I, like I was saying, you know, we go through this every block and era where people get surprised and shocked that the prices tank or the prices skyrocket and it becomes this big, you know, marketing ooh ah thing. And of course, when prices go down, everybody runs and says the end is near. Like I said, overall, we're not really seeing any other uh, quality conditions, just that one uh, crimped pack. But, you know, when you have an opportunity to buy into things, sure, they're not $100 a box or $110 a box anymore. But even 120 130 from stores across the country on, like, TCG players, and, ooh, a nice little Mew there. I mean, that's, that's still not bad. It's nowhere near the 150 to 200 range that a lot of these prices were for these boxes. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about Fates Collide here. This is very old product. I'm talking about the Scarlet and Violet, everybody. Or the, um, the ones that spiked and not a print are the Lost Origins of Silver Tempest. And again, we have another discussion video on that. I'll have a couple videos that just... This is one of those moments where I feel like people, once again, are sleeping on it. They're just not... They're just... I don't know. Ooh. Okay, we got something different here. Nice little Uncommon Spearlinger. Mega Catcher. This is a regular, non-textured Genesect EX. So we've had two of those. And those are both of them are the same non-textured flashy versions. But I just, I don't know. I just, I guess it blows my mind that I feel like I talk about the same thing over and over. And all it is is time moves forward. And the same conversation we're having for year after year on all these products. And, God, really? Another one? Holy cow. Zygode EX. That is a non-textured. Holy smokes, we have a, is this above, is this average or above or below pull rates? I, I don't, is this, this feels above average. Like in a 36 pack box opening here, even though this wasn't a booster box, this is Rudy broke down the, uh, the gift box stuff. Holy smokes. Hey, is that a break card? Oh my God, that brings back memories. I didn't even know there were break cards in Fake Fly. I thought break cards were just in Breakpoint Breakthrough. Wow, a break card, man. Holy smokes, that's. Boy, does that bring back memories. A break card. All right. I, does those ever do anything? Does, does those ever really, like, go up in value or get become, like, a thing? Those, like, a thing for... Really? A second? Wow. Okay. Two packs in a row. Two break cards. Dang. Seems like a really good... Like I said, all I did was just grab 36 packs from my giant Ruby's Bathroom Pokemon box that was sealed up. That's all I did. These are just random packs. There's no order to anything. So again, law of large numbers, as we slowly open some of these packs over the years for the patrons, you know, law of large numbers, it should all be pretty much normal and average. Last pack of the video, another weird upside down pack, exploit and nothing great there. That seems like a really good box opening though. Was that, is that above average? Can someone tell me? Is that above average? I mean, three, six, that's nine major hits, plus a lot of the regular hollows. That seems like quite a bit for a 36 packs. Like, is not is that above it? I don't know. It seems like it is to me. But my final comment, everybody, is obviously, Logan, thanks for being a very kind patron. All these uh, old Pokemon cards are heading your way, sir. Um, as always, everybody, just remember, the, the ebbs and flows of the market really do wreak a lot of psychological mood swings in the market. And the boom and bust of the cycle, it's tough for people to handle. It always has been, and it always will be. It's just a tough psychological thing. But, you know... I think the concept, the the long-term business of Pokemon, the brand, the IP, I think it all remains intact, and I think it all remains very positive in the long game. And I know everyone's going to make fun of me, or maybe, am I hype man or anti-hype man this month? I don't know. Well, let's hype uh, let's, Rudy the Shill Man for Pokemon? 
That doesn't sound right. Shill man for Metazoo uh, Magic and Flesh and Blood. All right. It's like, what am I shilling this month? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I got to spin the wheel. And um, I, I just, I still think the long-term concept of Magic, the long-term concept of Pokemon, no matter how it feels in the short-term moment, remains intact. The These IPs, these companies, I mean... We may not like the direction they're doing, but the data shows these things are still really successful, really popular, and doing really well. And that's that's just how it is. I mean, it is what it is, folks. So that's all I got today. Obviously, uh, like I said, I guess uh, last concept and last takeaway. If you missed out on Pokemon, Lost Origins, Silver Tempest, or even Scarlet Violet Base, and you want to buy into it cheap, this is probably your last chance. Over the next 6-12 months, it's not going to stay this way. Have a beautiful day, everybody.